Right, well, good morning everyone. Thanks for uh, turning up today. And uh, thanks again to Alice and Natalie for, for making this possible today. And also for Will for giving up his time to film the class. As you know, um, I've been doing Tai Chi now for 18 years. And I know most of you have as well. So it's important that we, we don't lose sight of all the good work that we've put in over the last few years. And we want to today be aware that if you are doing this from home, over the next few weeks and there will be members of the family that want to be joined in as well with you. So bearing that in mind, we want to try and make it as informative as we can in terms of the movement, but also being aware at the same time that we don't want to put over stress on the top of the hips, which often can be the case your first time. So today, intentionally, because we, we have to be uh, mindful of that, we know we can do three blocks, blocks one, two and three, and then on the third block he will give those hips a little bit of a rest. But any time should you need to stop, either stop and have a rest and then rejoin back in when you feel ready to do so. But also to try and keep it in keeping with what you're accustomed with as well, we want to do the same three blocks again where I will stop talking and we'll just let those movements flow one into the other. So that'd be a little bit more in keeping for those that do attend the class, but also not uh, losing sight of any family member that might be doing it for the first time. So are we ready to begin? Let's begin. Let's begin with block one. So we start with the feet, hip width apart, with your knees slightly soft, slightly bent. So we lift through the middle, take the arms forward, and we just bring both arms horizontal to the backs of the room. As the palms turn over, we come back to where we started as we go back to tree trunk. And as we come down, we can do that again as we lift through the center, we lift to the diaphragm, take the arms forward, full lock into the elbow, and we squeeze our shoulder blades together in the back. And then we come back to hugging the tree. Now you can do many of these, as many of these as you want. Normally we work on three. So this last one now, using your breath, using your nose to breathe in and then the mouth to breathe out. And then we just find our normal breathing pattern. Now from here, as we take that left hand to the sternum, the right hand now finds the chi ball. We turn the right foot to the side. As we step out to the right, we feel the weight on the front leg. And as we come across, we transfer the weight now to the other side, making sure that you don't cause any strain to the knees. So it's a good idea to make sure that your feet Go in the same direction as the hands. As we take the chi ball from side to side, again, how many we do is totally up to yourself, but normally we work around the figure of about eight. And as you're doing this now, you begin to feel a little bit looser into the hips. Back of the shoulders gets a nice stretch across the back, relieving any tension that we may be experiencing at this moment in time. And you'll notice one hand pushes, and then it replaces and it pushes across to the side. So a lot of the emphasis is on the hands at this stage. We're making sure that your knees are safe by making sure that by not using footwear, that you have a little bit more flexibility in the ankles. Now it changes slightly here. Because we're now on the right side, it's the right hand now that finds the pulse. As we come through, we go across, up and around. We find the pulse again, we come through, Come up, around, and down. Imagine you're holding a very heavy sword. As we lift that very heavy sword up, it becomes around, and then we do a nice horizontal strike across the body. Notice now the ankles, knees, and hips are beginning to loosen. So you might find now that encourages a deeper stretch. Feel the neck and shoulders now begin to activate. Now to come out of this, what we need to do now is put the weight more on one leg back to the center and that's the first section complete so now that's repeated on the other side so again as we come back to the diaphragm we lift we take the arms forward and we have a slight bend of the elbow we can fully extend as we come to the back of the room we feel the shoulder blades really squeezing together and then we come back to tree trunk again we come down this time again we can bring in the breath a little bit earlier so we breathe in and then we breathe out the shoulder blades squeezing together again, get rid of all that tension in the rhomboids right between the shoulder blade. And as before, we did three, so on this one again, we can use our nose or our mouth to breathe in. Always favorable to use the nose because it gives the chance for the air to warm before it goes to the lungs. 
And then finally, as we come back to tree trunk, we now take the weight through to the left side. So the left foot turns. We take the chi balls to the left. And we come through. Again with that chi ball. Move from shoulder to shoulder. Now as we take it through, make sure again that you're making sure now that your feet are always being turned so you're not going across the knee. You're working with the mechanics of the knee joints so your ligaments are always nice and safe. As you're doing this now, feel how you have 70% of the weight on one side, that transfers across to the side. Now last time we, we said we can do 8, we can do 16, we can do as many of these as we wish. But from there, what we want to do now is we want to put the weight now on that left leg. We need to find the pulse now on the other wrist. As we come through, we come up and around, taking a very heavy sword around the back. We come through, we lift up, around, and down. Feel the stretch now all the way down the side of the chest wall. So a lovely stretch for the rib cage, which helps us with our breathing. All those intercostal muscles require a nice stretch. That's what helps us with our aerobic fitness. Now from here, we need to start thinking about coming back to our centre point, which is where we started. So we return that left leg. As we come back to now our original position, as we lift through the centre, and push out to the sides. Now if you remember, that's how we started. But on this last and third section, that changes a little bit. This time, we start as we lift through the center, but we keep the arms lifted. And as we lift, we soften the knees. And as we flex forward, we have a variation now of painting the fence. So it's a little bit more dynamic. So we lift, we rise with the thumb lock into the elbow. But if you want a little bit more advancement with this to challenge your balance, let your heels lift. And then as you come down, press very heavy into your heels so you have full control of your balance. Again, we can use the breath, we can lift through the center with the breath in. And then as we come down, we let that breath release. And again, you normally do about four of these, you can do less, you can do more. You will hopefully take ownership of this when we decide to do this tomorrow. And that completes block one. Now when we move into block two, we need to adopt a wider stance. So from a Wu Chi stance to a wide Wu Chi stance. So when we go wide, again, what's important is that we don't put any unnecessary strain on the knee. So your knee's in line with your big toe. You want to be able to see your toes throughout. And just to get you into the mechanics of this, if we just transfer to one side, can you still see your toe? If you can't, just take the stance a little bit wider. So we go from side to side. Feel a full lock into the knee because often when we move into this movement where we go from side to side we often tend to think about the knee that's bending and really we're trying to activate more on the leg that's locking fully so therefore we get a deeper stretch so again by also working on the leg that's straight it gives us time to slow down and find the right pace as we now come back to 50-50 we can now start with that right arm as it reaches to the sky. We open up the knees. We go into spear hand now, and a spear hand drops into the knees. We do a nice soft guard. Now that's repeated down to the side, so we find a spear hand now with the left arm. We match that now with the right. As we drop into the knees, we find a nice soft guard. Now a soft guard is often when the move is kept flowing. If it's held, it becomes a very strong guard. Now as we do this, we can mobilize the neck as well as we look to one side. And as you do look to one side, if you can initially, just try to look 45 degrees. But if you want a little bit more now for the neck, this time as we lift, try and look 90 degrees to the left. And that can repeat it on the other side. Now to come out of this now, when we let that left arm drop, we go parallel now with the right arm. So we've got very much an open palm. And as we lift to the ceiling, there would be your salutation. 
We take the weight now over to the right leg and we block the sun. And we defend from the kick. Now when we transfer our weight across, we take back support with the palm and then we scoop. Now be careful when you're scooping that you don't put any unnecessary strain on your lower back. Again, if you'll notice now, we go to the same side. We block the sun, we defend from the kick, we transfer the weight, we take back support, and then we scoop. Now when you're scooping, if you can try and visualize what we're actually scooping. So as we come down with the scoop, we can take some water, and we can take a drink from the fountain. So that's the very soft side of the Tai Chi. But if we want to make that a little bit more aggressive, as we come through, we take some sand and we throw the sand into the attacker's eyes. So where does your mind wander to? Is it soft? Is it aggressive? Or is it friendly? Notice at all times the hand is on the thigh as we come through, so as we flex forward, you're not putting an unnecessary strain into your lower back. And we have a little variation with this, this time as we come through into salutation. If you let your wrists cross at the top, you may find that feels a little bit more lighter. So using the breath, we can breathe in, and then we can breathe out. Now before we go to the side, we now go back to where we started. We go back to our wide wood chi stance and we just get used to the mechanics of going from side to side. Now what we need to try and do now is mobilize the full length of the spine. So you'll notice now the hands just gently go from knee to the knee. Now to make this a little bit more dynamic, what we want to do now is the back of the hand just gently touch your lumbar spine. So now we have the movement, it's a little bit more dynamic, now that we have a little bit more rotation. Again, making sure your knees are nice and safe, so we don't push too far forward with the knees. Now from here, if we now come back to the centre, we lift again back to salutation. But this time we're going to fall now towards the left leg, we block the sun, we defend from the kick, we transfer the weight through, we take back support and then we scoop. We come through our centre line, that's a salutation. We fall now to the left, we block the sun, we block the kick and then we scoop. Now as before, if you want to make this a little bit more advanced or give it more of a Tai Chi feel, we let the wrist cross and we fall away. As we scoop, are we taking a drink from the fountain? Or are we taking some sand and throwing that sand into the attacker's eyes? So where does the mind wander to? Is it friendly? Is it aggressive? Now we need to go into singles now. So as we now go through to the other side, everything stays the same as before. And we can breathe in. And we can breathe out. In and we can breathe out. Last time, breathing in and breathing out. Now, as we move into block three, notice now this right hand now faces down, the left hand faces up. So we're back to chi ball. Last time we were in chi ball, we were from horizontal. Now we've just changed the position. Now, from here, I push down with that left hand, push up with the right. We have a nice lateral stretch for the spine. Now as we come through to the side, push down with the right hand and the left arm lifts. We come back to our chi ball. Now we have two more of these to do. So we press and push, and then we have that lateral flexion. Feel a nice little pull in the waistline. So great for the obliques. As we press, we push up, and we then do our little lateral stretch to the side. Now, as we said at the start of the video, we don't want to overload your hips for too long. So what we need to do now is give those hips a little bit of a rest. So this right leg now can step in twice. The first step is for those that have limited balance. 
For those that are feeling very strong with the balance, you can step one more time. Same as before, we press and we push. Lateral flexion to the side. Now we need to get to the side. So the right leg steps wide. I go back to wide mood chi. Again, it can be done in one step. Left leg can stop there. If your balance is limited, you might have any ankle, knee or hip conditions. If you want to advance it, let your leg go one more time. And we come around to our chi ball. Press down, we push up. Okay, now can we combine the legs and the arms in one move? A little bit more advanced. So we press and push up. There's that nice lateral flexion to the side. Would you be able to get to the side? Wide boot chi. Reverse stance. Back to chi ball. Press and push. Now we can move now into the next section. Notice to take back support. I take this arm now to the horizontal. That gives me the direction to go into Waibu Chi. But as the toes of the left foot lift, we come down. We match the palms now. As they come up, there would now be your strong block. So we come up, and as we push down, there is your strong block. Again, when we were talking about block one, we're working very much into the soft block. This is more the aggressive side, so this is a strong block because we reinforce it by just holding that momentarily. And we push up and then we drop down. As the arms come down, hopefully they come down as the knee begins to bend. Now if you want to add a little bit more into the balance challenge, as we look up to the ceiling, we take our vision elsewhere that puts a little bit more of a challenge on your balance. But again, not for everybody that, particularly if you have any neck concerns. So if you do have any neck problems, it's always best just to keep your chin a little bit lower. Now as to how many you would do of this, again, you might do four, you might do eight, you might do 16, wherever it wants to take you. Now I need to get to the side, so the arms lift, but I must turn the feet so I don't strain the knees. Exactly the same thing now on the other side, but notice the toes of the right foot lift, and then we press down into strong block. Are you finding your breath? Breathing in, breathing out. Do you want to challenge your balance again by letting your eyes look to the ceiling? This is very nice doing this outdoors, particularly now when you're looking up to the ceiling, looking to the sky. And then from there, we would finish in a strong block, we would come back to the center, and then we would go into painting the fence. Now here's where we combine all those moves together now. So we start with the left hand into chi ball. As we now move towards the right, we can step once, or we can step twice. But to advance it now is to put a little bit more strength into the front leg. So we bend, we press and push up as we lift out of the strength. Notice the low arm comes up, around and down. You have two of these to do. So this would be number one, strong block. And this would be number two. We would pause, do we take one step or do we take another step? Notice the elbows on an angle take it horizontal, and that allows us to go back to chi ball. We press down, we push up. There's that lovely stretch again. Left arm lifts, come through. We have two to do, so the toes lift. Lovely stretch for the ankle, number one, and then number two. Now, if you want to challenge yourself this time, can you take that step in one? We find the chi ball, we drop the weight, Press down, we push up. The bottom arm lifts. We step wide. Notice now we're moving into soft block because we're keeping it flowing. And as we step through, one step or two, your choice. Elbow lifts. We drop the weight into the front leg to get some strength, which will hopefully strengthen the knees. So the bottom arm lifts, we come through, and that completes Blocks one, two, 
and three. So I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. And then we come back to where we started, painting the fence. And then just to take any unnecessary ache off the hip, we would come back to Wu Chi. Well, for those of you that were at home doing that for the first time, I hope you enjoyed that. And that's something that I would really spend a lot of time working on before you progress onto anything new. And really get to understand the, the mechanics of the movements, and try and find your breath, and try and feel how the improvement develops over a short period of time. And then when you do feel ready to move on, hopefully you'll have the basic mechanics of moving on into some more, to some more blocks. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to, end, I'm going to put the next three blocks together. I'm going to make it flow so it's a little bit more mind and body for those that are at home or those that do, as we say, attend the class on a regular basis on a Monday, on a, on a Saturday, or rather I should say a Sunday. So are we ready to begin? Let's now combine blocks one, two and three together.
well, well done everybody, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. And just to finalise, just to let you know the benefits of the Tai Chi is for your strength, your balance, your flexibility, your coordination, your motor skills. So let's hope now you can take those three blocks and do that now, between now and when we come to see you in the near future. And uh, thank you for your, uh, for your focus and concentration. All the best.